On behalf of the Department of State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning, and the Department of Employment, Small Business and Training, I want to welcome you all to the Support to Grow Your Business webinar. Now, we're streaming live here from the beautiful Gold Coast, so wherever you're tuning in from across the state, a very warm welcome to each and every one of you. My name is Michael Lee. I'm a Principal Economic Development Officer working for the Department of State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning, SEQ South Regional Office. Now, it gives me great pleasure to be here with you today as your webinar host and MC, as well as one of your co-presenters for this morning's session. Now, this webinar is part of the workshops and events being facilitated across the state under Queensland Small Business Month 2023, which celebrates the vital contribution of small business to the state's economy. So I hope everybody is enjoying Queensland Small Business Month events uh, across the region and certainly in your local area. Now, before we begin, I'd just like to res respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the land in which this event is taking place and to acknowledge elders past, present and emerging. I also recognize that those whose ongoing effort to protect and promote Aboriginal and Torres Strait Island cultures will leave a legacy for future elders and leaders. Now, as today's event is a virtual event and we are presenting here from the Gulf Coast, I'd like to acknowledge the Kumanberi people and the other Yugamba language groups who are the traditional custodians of the Gulf Coast and Logan. Now, today's webinar is part of the State Development Group's How Government Can Help Your Business series, which incorporates a collection of webinars which we will be delivering across the state to provide you targeted information on available grants, services, programs, and support from government. And that's both state and federal. And it's really to help you succeed. Now, most of us are busy and time poor. So these shorter uh, 30 to 45 minute se segments of our, our webinars make it easier and less onerous for, for those of us attending. And it also provides you a more streamlined targeted platform to hopefully convey to you the, the key relevant Queensland government programs or the federal government programs that might be of most value to you. Now, as a participant, you're free to choose the webinar topic or topics that are most beneficial and relevant to your, meeting your business needs. Now, the webinar this morning is designed to provide you uh, valuable information on Queensland government grants, programs and support to help your business grow and succeed. The session for today will run for roughly 45 minutes in duration. So 30 minutes of that will be the formal presentations. We will then allocate uh, quite a long period, 15 minutes at the end of today's session for the question and answer session. Now, throughout the session, if you've got any questions or if you need further clarification on anything that uh, we'll be discussing, please feel free to pop that in by the chat function that, that you can see, and we'll certainly address your questions by the Q&A session towards the end. Uh, just as a note, today's webinar will also be recorded. Now, following today's session, the materials that will be made available to you will be a link to the webinar recording. So the link will be provided to you that will take you through to the Queensland Small Business Month uh, website. And there's a collection of, of recorded links from all the online events that will be taking place across the state. Uh, you'll also be provided with a PDF copy of today's presentation, as well as a feedback survey link as well. Now, your feedback is extremely valuable for us, and we do kindly ask that you take a few short moments of your time just to complete the feedback survey. Uh, so that you can uh, obtain today's web webinar materials. Now, the feedback survey allows myself and my team a better indication of how we're performing and also gives you an indication um, to allow us to find out some of the other topics that might be of interest to you for future presentations. Now, just as an important reminder, if you could keep your microphones on mute and also your cameras turned off for the duration of the session. Now, the topics that we'll be covering today is really part one with a presentation from Desbit, so the Department of Employment, Small Business and Training. Now, Desbit will be covering uh, three key aspects within their presentation. So how Desbit helps small businesses to start, grow and employ through their grants and programs. 
They'll be taking you through support services for Queensland employers looking to hire job seekers and manage their growing workforce. Uh, they'll also be covering the funded programs that are available to help employees acquire additional qualifications, knowledge and skills. Uh, that will be followed by myself presenting on the Department of State Development Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning. And it's really to give you a better understanding of who this, the State Development Group are and some of the support that we might be able to provide your business as well. Now, finally, we will then conclude with a Q&A session at the end of close to the end of today's session. So we now move on to part number one, um, how Desbit can help your business grow and succeed. So I'm delighted to introduce our first key presenter for today, uh, J Dr. Jill Gray. Jill is a program manager in the Department of Employment, Small Business and Training, and has a long history of working with SME businesses, particularly in innovation. Jill was previously the manager of technology and commercialization with the Department of Employment, Economic Development and Innovation, or uh, the, the old DD days. She has extensive experience in training and development and has acted as senior consultant providing advice to government bodies and larger organizations across a range of industries. If we could all welcome Jill. Oh, thank you, Michael. That's great to be with you. And uh, thank you for the opportunity of coming in and speaking with you this morning, particularly in the month of May, which is our Small Business Month, and we're celebrating small business, which is great. And uh, I'm sure you love our slogan there, love your small business. We're here to support small businesses. Well, I guess I often get asked, what is the Department of Employment, Small Business and Training? What do you actually do? And I guess it, we, we've got a threefold approach. We're here to uh, assist businesses to grow and we want to actually see economic growth in, in our state. And the three areas we work in is employment, where we try to increase participation in the workforce and also help disadvantaged people to find those employment opportunities. Obviously, we're focused on small business where we want to provide support and we've got a range of grants and programs and support services for small business to help them be resilient, to, to grow and to keep employing people. And then the third string to our bow is training and skills. So we fund a, a range of VET programs, vocational education and training programs and qualifications to assist people to improve their skills, which hopefully will lead to improved productivity and, uh, and economic growth. The first thing I'd like to talk about is how we deliver programs to get people back to work and support businesses to actually employ and assist job seekers. We've got a range of initiatives here, and one of those is what we call the Back to Work program. This program has been around for some time, and it's particularly targeted to enable um, employers to be supported to employ these disadvantaged groups. So we look at young people who are between 15 and 24, uh, who may have been, had been unemployed for over eight weeks and not quite sure what they're going to be doing. And if you're taking on somebody like that, there are, in, if you're eligible, there are some grants that are available. Um, we can have payments of up to $20,000 to support them. We also have the Back to Work, which is for people who are from targeted groups, the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples, people with a disability, and long-term unemployed people who've been out of work for over 12 months. So we offer up to $15,000 for those as a, an incentive or a, a support for, for employers to take those people on. Additional financial, non-financial supports available for small businesses to manage and support employees just to retain that employment. We've got a range of, of activities that we, we put in place to assist employers. Earlier last year, we had the um, jobs workforce strategy developed. We had a, a, a forum where we brought people together to find out what the issues were and how to respond to them. And so the Good People, Good Jobs Queensland Workforce Strategy 2022 to 2032 has been developed. It's a 10 year blueprint to bring Queensland's current and future workforce up to, to strengthen it. So part of that is the Queensland Workforce Connect Fund, where we actually fund um, industry organisations to support workforce development. We have also appointed 10 industry workforce advisors who work with peak bodies and in particular 
industry sectors to work with, with businesses to assist them with strategies to build their workforce. Um, we're strengthening that collaboration between industry, employers, the training sector stakeholders and with, and with government to try and invest and plan for the, the future skills and the training that's going to link people into those jobs. With any of these, um, there are details that are available for you, and I, I'm not going to go into the detail right now, but I will link you into some of the, the uh, sources to be able to look at the eligibility criteria. We've got a whole range of issues too that we address through helping our small businesses. And there's the stages of, of, of small business starting, growing, thriving, and we support them through grants, support programs, and services in a range of different ways. The source of most information is Business Queensland website, um, www.business.qld.gov.au. We always encourage you to go there as that source of information where you can find the key information and the up-to-date information. It's broken up into the different phases, so you can look at starting a business, running a business. Um, there's some industry sector -ish issues there. We have had a whole section on COVID-19 to guide businesses through that process. And then we also have a small business hotline, and I've got the, the number there, 1300 654 687. And that hotline will be able to pass you on to someone who can actually assist you with whatever the particular issue is. Always being asked about grants. Do we have grants? What grants do we have? And as you can appreciate, they come and go. They're open and they close. Um, and so what we always encourage you to do is to go to Business Queensland and find what's relevant at the time. There's also the Grants Finder, grants.services.qld.gov.au. That will show you things like what small business grants are available, social enterprise grants, but it also covers more than our department. And it'll come up with things that are related to advanced Queensland or manufacturing hubs. So it's always a good point of contact to go and have a look at where the grants might be at the moment. Some of the other initiatives that we've looked at is the financial and wellbeing counselling support. We know that a lot of businesses suffer hardship and particularly through COVID that's been difficult and, and some of the disasters that we've faced. And one of the things that's really important is to understand that small business well-being is important. How do you make sure that you as a small business owner or your staff are um, being well, well cared for? So we have small business wellness coaches who can assist with, with some of that, unpacking some of those things and looking at strategies to deal with them. We also have small business financial counselling and uh, we work through the, the, I've got CCIQ, we now call that Business Chamber. Um, they have a wellness program that we support as well. There's also another site there that I put up there, which is a federal government one, but it helps you to, to look at what some of those small business issues may be and how to, how to look at the business health side of things. Another big invest, uh, initiative we have is mentoring for growth. Um, this is a program that's been around again for a long time, and this gives you access to a mentor who can sit with you and, and work on the particular issue that you may need support for. Um, these are practical people who have business experience and give of their time to sit with you and, and assist you to work through a particular issue or a particular concern or opportunity. We break this up. We have mentoring for investment. So if you're thinking of investing in a business or looking to, to gain investment, how do you go about that? What's the issues that you should be addressing and uh, in advice that you may need? We've got mentoring for pitch. So if you want to actually present your, your business or your business services or products, how do you do that? And how do you get the support to, to make it really impactful? Mentoring for export, if you're looking at that next stage to start to export overseas, we can link you with a mentor who's able to support you. And then mentoring for recovery. And we've had a, a lot of circumstances over the last two or three years where businesses have had to reach out for some support to, to rebuild after some pretty awful experiences. We also have a, a range of Ask a Mentor articles on the, on the Business Queensland website. So there may be a question that you've got that somebody else has already asked and you can pop into that and, and see what those articles are suggesting. Um, we also offer a business planning webinar and a tool for doing a business health check. So there's a range of things that we've got there for small businesses. 
Um, I will mention too the role of the Queensland Small Business Commissioner. Now this has been a really important role um, and the Queensland Small Business Commissioner is there to advocate on your behalf. Um, their office will assist with dispute resolution and particularly in the area of rental disputes. We've uh, seen a lot of support being provided there to resolve some of those issues. Um, we have a Small Business Advisory Council which advises our Minister uh, on an ongoing basis of the issues and uh, support that's, that's required in the business community. Obviously, every year we have our Small Business Month, which we're celebrating at the moment. I've spoken before about the, the Business Queensland website. There's another tool, tool too called the Business Launchpad, which enables you to seek out what the regulatory requirements are for your particular area. And uh, it's a great tool to be able to find out, well, what are all the licensing and regulatory requirements for my particular business in my particular local government area? It asks you a series of questions and it responds and gives you the, in, the, uh, the re regulations you've got to con contend with. We've, I've mentioned before the Small Business Hotline and I do encourage you, if you have questions or you'd like further support, um, please do contact that, that, uh, that hotline. And uh, the other thing we work with very strongly is the Business Chamber, it's previously known as um, Chamber of Commerce and Industry Queensland. And uh, we partner with them in a range of activities and we support them and they support us. So we work together to be able to, to offer those things. The last thing I want to talk about is, is quality training and skills and the work that we do to um, prepare people for work now and in the future. It's one of the critical parts of, of our department and what a lot of this is, is funding training programs. So we found, fund vocational education and training from certificate level through to advanced diploma level. And that could be school based apprenticeships where young people at school engage in a, an apprenticeship or a traineeship whilst they're still at school. Usually they'll get a certificate one or a certificate two, the foundational skills that they need to then go on and complete the traineeship or the, the apprenticeship when they leave school. We also offer vocational education and training in schools, and this complements the basic training that people are doing, the education that they are undertaking in their high schools and gives them some contemporary skills that they can use and transfer into the employment when they do leave school. We also very much support and, and promote the, the notion of free TAFE. You will have seen many um, advertisements and promotions of free TAFE at the moment. A whole range of, of, of courses that are now available and enable people to pick up the skills they need to either de develop in their job or to find employment in, in the first place. Our department subsidises training for a number of qualifications. One of those obviously is apprenticeships and traineeships. So we subsidise the courses that are used. Our um, employers have the choice of which training provider they will use to be able to supplement the on-the-job training that uh, apprentices and trainees go under. And we subsidise those, those training programmes. We subsidise certificate three level training for, for people too, to give them those basic qualifications. And we also have a range of higher level certificates and diplomas. These courses are, are selected based on where the skill needs are in, in the industry. And so it's an investment that the government's making in ensuring that we've got a skilled workforce to be able to support um, our industries and our economy going forward. Another program that's really um, very powerful is Skilling Queenslanders for Work. This is a program where we actually support or fund community-based organisations to provide that sort of wraparound support for people who are experiencing disadvantage long-term unemployed. They may be you know, youth who are finding it hard to find work. They may be um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders, dis disability people, whatever. There's a range of um, uh, people who, who may require some additional support, wraparound support, to enable them to complete their training successfully. So this is a partnership between the community-based organisation, a training organisation, and the links to employers that they have as well. The goal of this program is to take people on board, support them to, to develop skills, develop their teamwork, and find meaningful employment as a result of it. And this program has been going for several years and has created uh, employment for thousands of people. 
Another role that we have as um, a department is to manage those training contracts for Queensland's apprentices and trainees, work with their employers and provide that ongoing support and advice to ensure that uh, tra trainees and apprentices are able to get the training that they need, the supervised work experience they need and be equipped to become the trades people that they are intending to do. So a lot of our work is in actually supporting both the apprentices and the employers to ensure that we do get that retention and completion of those apprenticeships. We also work closely with the Queensland Training Ombudsman. So if there are any issues or um, that, that are raised or questions that need to be resolved, we work closely with the Ombudsman to, to resolve those issues. So one of the things that we're very proud of is that we work with to try to align those training pathways with workforce requirements both now and into the future. What we look for is input from a range of partners and their networks to make sure that the training we're offering is actually what the employers are requiring, what they're looking for. So people are equipped for the jobs for both now and for the future. We have industry skills advisors who work with peak bodies and they represent 13 industry sectors. They're out there talking to industry, talking to employers and bringing those issues back to us to enable us to make the right investments to, uh, to, to support skills into the future. We also have regional jobs committees where we work alongside local um, councils and, and, and employers and big businesses in the regions to look at what the issues are and how we can best support jobs in that region. There's nine locations where it is in action. And of course, we also have Jobs Queensland that does an absolutely amazing job in terms of providing information on what the job market is like, but also a whole range of tools and techniques that can assist businesses to be able to plan for the future um, and understand what their workforce issues are. We also have a range of programs that we've we've initiated to connect Queenslanders with skills and training opportunities. One of those is the Gateway to Industry Schools program. There's 11 priority industry sectors where we work closely with education to open up doors for young people coming through school to understand what the industries are and how they can find a pathway into that industry. Um, I've mentioned before, we have 10 new industry workforce advisors um, supporting employers to work on those workforce challenges and possibly solutions and supports. We've got a, a pre-apprenticeship support program, and we also have um, the trade skills assessment, gap training program, registered trade skills pathways, a whole range of, of programs for experienced workers to earn a qualification. And probably the one that, that's Great fun is that we have the Queensland Training Awards every year where we celebrate the power of skills to change lives and uh, we enjoy those uh, celebrations every year. And one of the things I haven't mentioned that I think I need to, to, to bring to your attention is we've just released the Business Growth Fund, which opens on Monday, next Monday. Um, and that is funding for small businesses um, to buy or to acquire significant um, equipment. And this is a, a program that's between 50 and $75,000 subsidy, but we do expect that the business will put 40% co-contribution into it. Again, all the details can be found on Business Queensland website. And as you go there, this actually has a little questionnaire you can fill in to see if you're you're eligible or not. So it's, it's certainly worth having a look at. Other other. Um, funds that we offer during the year um, come and go as I've said before and again it's a matter of going back to that website and keeping your eye on when when they open and when they close um, and I can provide more details on those as we go forward or offline. I'm going to come to the end of my presentation now and just suggest that there are ways in which you can continue to connect to us so if you have questions yes certainly raise them through the chat today but uh, you can also connect with us um, offline after this session. I've given you our, uh, our, our hotline there uh, and uh, the website, our department website and the Business Queensland website. Um, the area I come from is South East Queensland um, and my email address there is southtraining at 
qld.gov.au. If you have inquiries, you can send them through to that email address. If you're not in South East Queensland, we will actually pass that on to the region that can help you and somebody from that region will be in touch with you. Similarly, if it is in our region, we'll certainly get back to you and, uh, and address the, the question. We've also got Facebook um, and LinkedIn connections there. But one of the greatest things is to suggest that you subscribe to our Small Business Connect newsletter. And you can go in there on the Business Queensland's website and uh, just go in there and uh, subscribe to that newsletter. It comes out on a regular basis and that will inform you too if any grants or new programs are coming online and uh, certainly keep you in touch with what's going on. So I hope that's, hope that's been really helpful and um, uh, I'll pass back now to, to Michael and if there's questions that we can address later in the uh, session, then I look forward to, to doing that. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you, Jill, for that very informative presentation on Desbit and the support for employers and small business. Um, key takeaways there, I, I guess, out of Jill's presentation, you know, certainly keep connected. Um, so you could do that via the business.qld.gov.au website, as well as the Desbit website. Um, now, if you've got questions for Jill, please feel free to drop that into the chat function now, and we'll certainly revisit those at the end of today's session as part of the Q&A. Um, now, with that, we'll now move on to part number two, which is taking you through the state development group and how we can add value and help your business. Now, some of you listening in may already know about the Department of State Development Infrastructure Local Government Planning, and you might already be working with some of our officers within our regional offices within your local area. However, for those of you that aren't aware of the state development group, we're really the department's lead agency that's driving economic development for, for Queensland. Now, we incorporate the functions of the Coordinator General as well as Economic Development Queensland, and therefore the large coordinated projects in the state and priority development areas. We also have our colleagues for local government and planning. Now, state development purpose is to think ahead and act now to secure responsible economic development and livable, livable communities for us as Queenslanders. And we do this by supporting a number of initiatives, including economic growth and innovation, job creation, investment, new infrastructure, and planning and increasing workforce participation. Now, State Development Strategic Plan was launched back in 2022, and it really paves the way for our department's strategic direction uh, for, for the next uh, four years, up until 2026. Now, in terms of the priorities for state development, it's really securing responsible economic development in livable communities. Now, our strategic plan also highlights and outlines how our department is going to deliver to, uh, on the Queensland government's objectives for the community. And the, the government objectives are supporting jobs, backing small business, making it for Queenslanders, building Queensland, growing our regions, investing in skills, and protecting the environment. Now, our department have, have launched the Yuri Guri framework of 2021 through to 2024. Now, underpinning the strategic plan, state development uh, through the Yuri Guri framework really details the department's commitment to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and communities. It draws together the department's vision, purpose, and initiative to increase participation right across and contribution of First Nation communities and peoples within Queensland's economy. It also fosters the department's commitment to hopefully be a, a workplace of choice for First Nations people. So what do we do? W regarding state development, uh, we've got uh, 14 regional offices right across the state that help business and industry. So our regional development officers, we look to work one-on-one -on -one with you as a business in a number of priority industry sectors. So we assist these high growth businesses really to help them navigate through government. And it's through all three tiers of government. So we work very closely uh, with uh, the local councils. We also work in collaboration uh, with our state agencies, as well as our federal government colleagues as well. And it's really to help you to unlock and address some of your unique challenges and opportunities. So regardless of uh, what issues or challenges or opportunities that you might have, 
our state development officers really get a better understanding and really help facilitate your journey through to success as well. And hopefully connecting you in with the key individuals, programs and support that, that is relevant to your organization. Now, our teams also deliver workshops such as the one that you're attending today. And our, our access through all of our services can be had by our regional offices that are statewide, or it's really through our call center um, of 13QGov or 137468. And our other online resources um, on top of the Business Queensland uh, website that Jill has mentioned is really our state development website, which is on www.statedevelopment.qld.gov. Now, our teams operate and assist businesses through a number of priority and emerging industry sectors. So some of these uh, priority or emerging sectors includes aerospace, beef processing, biofutures, biomedical, defense, hydrogen, mining equipment, technology and services or the METS industry, resource recovery, as well as super yachts. Now, all these priority industries are underpinned by 10 year roadmaps and action plans of the strategies, um, which outline how government and industry will work together to continue to support and grow these sectors. So on screen there, you do see, I, I guess, the collection of different uh, strategies or, or uh, action plans and roadmaps that, that are there for those key priority sectors. So how does the state development group make a difference for you and your business? So here's a graphical representation. So you've got uh, two axes. So the one down the bottom there is time, and the one to the left-hand corner there is economic performance. Now, as an organization is established, uh, we generally tend to look for organic growth within your business. So that's represented by that dark blue line there, which is a business as usual scenario. I guess by engaging state development, we start to get a better understanding of some of the key challenges or issues that you might be faced with, as well as your opportunities. And then we link you in with the appropriate support or the key people within council, state government, or the federal government. So with the engagement, we hopefully put you on a, a different uh, growth trajectory. And, and really, I guess the difference between the business as usual scenario, as well as that accelerated growth, is how state development make a difference to you and your business. So with that, I guess uh, through our regional offices, we provide assistance to help high growth businesses and through a range of activities that I mentioned. So workshops uh, such as this one today, we hold uh, regional events, there's programs, services, grants and referrals. And it's really to help you in overcoming those challenges, improving your processes and capability, linking you in with opportunities and ultimately helping you to grow and succeed. Now, one of the other services that state development provide within the supply chain side is really the Queensland Supplier Request Form. So through this, uh, state development is committed to help Queensland manufacturers and businesses that were impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as the current global economic conditions. So for those of us listening in, if we are finding it difficult to find either vital materials or supplies, uh, maybe as inputs into your manufacturing, or if you're just looking for additional suppliers that might provide you additional goods, um, please feel free to go through to follow that web link to complete the supply request form uh, that's there. Now, there'll be a series of different questions that will be asked of you, trying to get a better understanding of what it is that you might be sourcing. Um, and then really that then is then provided through to the appropriate regional office that will undertake uh, additional market research to help provide you additional information. Now, much of the information will help link you in with uh, other Queensland based suppliers that might be able to provide you those those goods or those inputs. If not, this, the second pass will be lo then looking at and identifying Australian suppliers before then providing you a list of potentially overseas suppliers. Now, through the state development website, uh, we have an industry support page, which I'll draw your attention to as well. So you can find it via the, the web link down below, and it really outlines state development's uh, key support for business and industry. So there are a raft of, of, of key links that are there, and much of it uh, provides you additional information of some of the grants, workshops, and support that, that is provided through to you. Now, some of the, the key things that our regional office network do is that we provide on a regular basis different workshops and webinars. 
So one of the the, the core uh, events that we've got coming up is really the supplying in a major projects webinar that that is made available. So as you can see um, on screen there, the webinar itself uh, really helps you understand the requirements and certifications needed to join a, a major project supply chain. So with those of us listening in, if we are interested in operating in that major project space, if we are looking for either supply opportunities um, through to those major projects, we would certainly encourage you to attend. We got two different uh, sessions made available. Um, so these online sessions are on the 24th of May, as well as the 26th of July. It's between 9 a.m. through to 12 p.m. And it's at a cost of $50. Uh, through the event itself, you will also be provided through with a very detailed toolkit, as well as a self-assessment to give you a better understanding of, of what it takes, obviously, to operate in that, that major project supply chain. Now, some of the core business as usual events that we do run on a regular basis throughout our regional office network is really workshops as well as webinars in helping you through as part of the, the tendering journey. So many of these workshops and webinars will, will assist you with things like uh, capability statement development. So capability statement uh, is really your business CV. Uh, similar to ourselves going for a, a job, we would all have personal CVs or personal rem resumes. Capability statement is really your business CV or your business resume. Now, it's helping you in honing that capability statement, hopefully to get the, the best outcomes when you are engaging those major buyers. For those of us that are then taking it through to the next step, and we're looking for tendering through to opportunities, either through the government or the private sector, we do have webinars and workshops that help you through your tender journey. Um, the other webinars that are also made available or workshops is really our contract delivery uh, sessions as well. So with those of us, that if, if we've been successful as part of the tender journey and we want a, a, a contract, the contract delivery sessions really takes you through how to manage that contract to successfully deliver on that project. Now, for those of us interested in additional uh, resources for tendering, I will draw your attention to the uh, the two key websites that are there. Uh, the first one is through the industry support page through state development that I, that I spoke about. And there's a, a sub link there called promoting your business. So promoting your business, there's a, a collection of up to six pre-recorded webisodes there that really provide you additional information, additional support to help you through on your tendering journey. Um, uh, the other website that is there, once again, it's via the Business Queensland uh, website. Uh, very, very comprehensive resource there on tendering. And I would certainly encourage everybody to go through to have a look. Uh, there's a, a additional information, there's tools, templates, and resources that are invaluable for those of us that are looking at tendering, um, either for the private sector or, or for government. So folks, that, in, in itself uh, really uh, concludes our formal presentation for today. Uh, we will now move on to the Q&A session. Now, what I'd ask each and every one of you to do, if you do have a question um, either for Jill or myself that, that you would like to address uh, us to address, if I could just encourage you to quickly pop that via the chat function, and we'll certainly utilize the, the time now just to address and answer um, any of those questions that you have. So I'll just give you a few moments there. Um, please feel free to put in any questions that you might have for both Jill and myself. So, Jill, did you want to um, read out that first question? There was one question here that somebody asked about whether um, agriculture is one of the industry sectors. And uh, I can say, tell you, agriculture and horticulture, um, we do have a workforce device that has been um, assigned to that, working with the Queensland Farmers Federation. Um, again, you can find the details on Business Queensland when you look at contact an industry workforce advisor. That person's name is Kim Wesley. And uh, again, the contact details are on the, on the website there. 
Thanks. Great, thank you, Jill. Um, another question has come in um, from Michael. Uh, Michael's asked, are there any current subsidies for placing solar and batteries on factory premises? Um, so, Michael, with this one, uh, the federal government have launched a, a particular grant in which we will uh, provide to you. Um, the, the grant itself, I, I believe, has already closed and it's uh, subsidies, I think, from memory through to about thirty thousand um, dollars match funding that's there. Um, they're for different, uh, I guess, purchases and inclusions, obviously, to help um, reduce either wastewater or electricity usage. Um, once again, we, we will provide those specific links um, through to you as well. Um, and certainly th this round has closed, as I'm as I'm aware, but uh, there, there could be future rounds for that. Um, with the state development group, um, any other initiatives that, that may be coming to play in regards to decarbonization or ESG, uh, we will certainly provide that through to you. Um, so part of attending today's session, we will include you um, certainly on, on our mailing list if, if you are um, interested and, and you have enabled us to do that. And we will certainly keep you updated of any um, upcoming and future programs that are, that are made available. Now, some of the other questions as well. Um, so this one is, is, is for Jill. Um, now, my business is located in the scenic rim. I have a 19 year old person who has been unemployed for over a year now. Is my business eligible for back to work funding? Now, I can't say definitely, but certainly it sounds like it may, may meet those requirements. So what I would suggest is that you contact us and then we can connect you with the back to work officer who will go through the details of your particular situation and help you to work through that. But again, I keep pointing you back to the Business Queensland website because that's where all the details are in terms of eligibility. So uh, look, good opportunity, but um, I would suggest you contact us to, to clarify further. That's great. Thank you, Jill. Um, we've got another question here. Um, so my company is interested in tendering for government opportunities. What programs or support is available? And where is the best place to look for tender opportunities? Um, so I'll certainly address that one. Um, the key website for Queensland government opportunities is really the Q Tender website. Um, the Q Tenders website really showcases all the tender opportunities through the Queensland government regarding our agencies and our departments. Um, it also showcases some opportunities through local councils as well as uh, universities and some of our, our uh, government owned corporations as well. Now, through Q Tenders, you could go through to log in and, and certainly register as a supplier. Uh, for those of us interested in tender opportunities, I would certainly encourage you to go through the registration process. It, it, it takes probably about five minutes in duration. Um, and any new opportunity that then is launched uh, through that portal, you will get an automatic email notification with further information. Um, the other key things I'd, I'd probably draw your attention to, as I mentioned, um, with through my our regional office team, we do run regular events, um, certainly to help you as part of your tender journey. So, you know, certainly with the events themselves, the tendering for business, the capability uh, statement workshops, webinar, and even the contract delivery sessions are made available to you. And it's really trying to build your skill sets, build your capabilities as part of your, your, your tender journey. Um, the other thing I'll certainly draw your attention to is really those key websites via the uh, state development website for, for promoting your business, as well as the very comprehensive um, tender resources that are available through the Business Queensland website that's there. Um, now, some other questions as well. So my business is in central Queensland and we've just bounced back from COVID-19. I've been trying to hire five new staff and finding it difficult uh, to, to, to know where to go. Is there someone who can assist my business to grow our staff numbers? I might pass that one back to Jill. Well, um, this is probably where the, the industry workforce advisors come in and uh, they can certainly assist you. We can put you in touch with them. We also have a regional jobs committee in your local area. One of the other things that uh, is, is there as part of the Workforce Connect funding is um, some grants that are available or will become available um, to support HR 
issues with 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 small business. So if you've got some innovative ideas in terms of how you might be able to address that with some HR, you can work through that industry workforce advisor. So that's the, the, the key point I would say is connect with your industry workforce advisor, look at some of those options um, and they will be able to assist you. And if, if the other option is to contact your local regional office at Despot and one of our officers will be able to talk to you through that. So folks, uh, there's a few other questions here. Um, another question is what support is available to expand technology businesses into rural and regional areas? Um, look, with this particular question, uh, in regards to technology businesses, if, if you're in ICT, uh, that's probably one we're going to have to take offline. Um, there are uh, additional uh, grants in relation to, I guess, assisting organizations within uh, manufacturing that I can certainly talk um, in, in further detail about, but through any ICT businesses, um, we, we will have to take that offline to, to certainly address that for you. Um, other questions that we've got is, uh, does women in trade subsidies cover female to male transgender by Shane? I think that's one we probably need to take offline. I wouldn't be able to answer that one at the moment, but I'm certainly happy to come back to you on that one. So folks, I think we've got time for just one more question here. So just going through the chat function now. Uh, will you receive the documents that have been presented today? Uh, yes, you will. Um, we, we do encourage you obviously to complete our feedback survey and we'll certainly provide you the, the link for that very shortly. Um, the last question that we, we might address is really, is timber manufacturing one of the priority industry groups? Um, and that's that's been asked by Jane. Uh, so I'll take that one. So, so Jane, um, through uh, manufacturing, uh, that's looked upon and, and covered by our colleagues in another department, uh, the Department of Regional Development, Manufacturing and Water. Uh, they do have regional offices right across the state, as well as uh, key manufacturing hubs uh, right across the state to, to support manufacturers as well. Um, so certainly with yourselves in manufacturing, uh, there are grants available within manufacturing. Their flagship grant program is called the Made in Queensland Grant Program. And it, it's really matched funding from 50,000 through to $2.5 million for eligible businesses. Uh, that really helps your organization in adopting uh, and transitioning into uh, Industry 4.0 practices. So it's really, I, I guess, uh, helping uh, traditional manufacturers transition into advanced manufacturers. Uh, within the the hubs grant uh, hubs side of things, they do have various different manufacturing hubs um, made available too. So the hubs locations are in Mackay, in Cairns, in Gladstone. Uh, there's one here on the Gold Coast, in Rockhampton, and in Townsville. And for those that are uh, Queensland-based manufacturers within those hubs regions, there are additional hubs grants of anywhere from ten thousand through to fifty. 500,000 for eligible um, SME manufacturers as well. So folks, on that, uh, that's really all the questions that we have time to answer. Those of us that have asked a question online, uh, both Jill and I will certainly take your, your, your question and we will provide you an offline response um, in, in, in relation um, to, to your questions as well. So folks, that formally concludes uh, today's webinar presentation. Um, a very big thank you firstly to Jill for co-presenting with myself and really for you as participants in taking time out of your busy day and in attending our session for today. Hopefully it's been of value for you. Uh, just as a reminder, you will receive an email with a link to our feedback survey. But those that may have a mobile phone handy right now, if you'd like to take a scan of our QR code, that will redirect you through to our feedback survey. Now we do kindly ask that you complete uh, the feedback survey for today, just to be able to receive uh, the uh, link to the PDF recording for today's webinar, as well as a copy of today's PDF uh, presentation as well. Um, now your feedback is greatly appreciated and really helps myself, the department, really improving uh, our current and future uh, workshop offerings and events. Now, for those of us that might need further assistance, I have provided for you contact details of both Jill and myself. 
Uh, both Jill and, and myself, as you're aware, we, we do operate within the Southeast Queensland um, region. But for those of us listening in in other parts of the state, um, as soon as we receive your inquiry, we'll certainly redirect that to the appropriate regional office to provide you local support. Now, for those of us that might be interested in attending any of our future workshops or sessions, or if you'd like to contact Desbit or our state development regional offices, please follow the web links that you see on screen there. Um, or you could always call the Queensland government's uh, uh, call center on 13QGov. So with that, folks, look, we hope you enjoyed today's presentation and found the information valuable. Thank you once again for your attendance, and we look forward to seeing you at our next webinar. So thank you once again. Enjoy all the other events within Queensland Small Business Month 2023.